So a question I've been asking myself for a while now is what's the Yu-Gi-Oh card buying experience like for the average person. Because if you're anything like me, you've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh for so long that you're kind of just like, we know everything about the cards and the formats and the ban list, what comes in each pack and like if this pack's worth buying or not. But what I wanted to know is like, what does average Joe who doesn't keep up with all that, is Konami doing a good job of like putting out a good offering on the average store shelf for like just a normal regular person? This could be like a newcomer who doesn't really know anything about the game or maybe somebody who's trying to get back into it. We're gonna assume that this person doesn't really know about their local card shop and the fact that they can maybe buy singles or trade for things. So I did just that. I went to my local Walmart and just took a look at what exactly is there and how much it costs and like, is it worth it or not? Your mileage will totally vary with this. Every Walmart's gonna differ a little bit in their selection and stuff like that. You might also find yourself at a GameStop or a Target or some other department store. So the first thing I saw on the shelf was these Rage of the Abyss four packs. I don't really know exactly what Konami is calling these, but basically they have been making them for the last few mainline sets where you get four packs of the set and also a variant token card and they cost $17.99. So right off the bat, these are interesting. I think that they're a decent deal. I feel like buying a single one-off pack of any given Yu-Gi-Oh set today probably just isn't worth it. The MSRP for a pack right now is $4.49 and while that's not actually as high as something like Pokemon or Magic is, I still feel like just buying one pack for that price and just pulling like random stuff isn't really worth it. It's better to at least buy a few packs at a time. So in that way, this product is doing a pretty good job. I don't think that it's as cool as the old special editions that Yu-Gi-Oh used to have where you would pay $9.99 and you get three packs plus one or two promo cards. I think that was like peak sort of low level Yu-Gi-Oh pack buying at the store because it was good value for money since you were getting like a discount on the packs and you got a promo card and they even made for like good prizes at local tournaments and stuff like that. These I'm a little bit more mixed on because $17.99 is still a bit of a tall ask because it's basically just the MSRP of four packs added together. You're not really getting like any sort of a discount. You do get token cards and the tokens are pretty cool. Usually they're just based on anime characters that got support in the most recent set. For Rage of the Abyss, weirdly enough, it's just the protagonists and they're just sort of like standing there. I still don't think that they really like take the place of a proper promo or reprint or something like that, but it's fine. I bought a few of these myself before and I, the pulls are like whatever. I mean, I usually find myself with one ultra out of four packs, so I think that's all right, but I think they could definitely improve this. Either they could go back to sort of the special edition model and make it maybe like, I don't know, let's say 12 bucks because I know like the cost of packs has gone up a little bit, but that would still be a bit of a discount and you can still include the token and maybe like an actual promo card, like a reprint or something. Or maybe what they could do is just take this product here and drop it from like $17.99 to like $14.99. And I think suddenly this is a surprisingly good value, like four packs. 15 bucks, a token, not bad. Similar product to this is the Light of Destruction reprint. So this one, I can just safely say I don't really like. It is a reprint of an old pack, Light of Destruction, from like 2008. That's pretty cool, like it's kind of got some retro nostalgic appeal, though it is a little bit random, like it's just Light of Destruction. Like they, they haven't done the same thing with Phantom Darkness or Gladiator's Assault or like any of the sets around it. I think that the reason they did this was because Light Swords got support cards earlier in the year and so since this is the set where Light Swords debuted, you could sort of theoretically get Light Swords in their original rarity and that's cool, I guess. This one's weird though because it uses the new Yu-Gi-Oh card printing style, but it does have the old sort of rarity distributions from the set. You don't even get a guaranteed super in every pack. Oh, and you don't even get a token in this, like, it, or any promo. It's, it's a $17.99 and just four packs and you're not guaranteed like a foil in each pack. And it's just, yeah, this one I definitely would not buy and I hope that a person doesn't mistake this as like a new Yu-Gi-Oh pack and just get it because they'll be getting old cards that mostly aren't usable today. And then the last one in this category are the retro packs where you get four of them for the same price again. I didn't actually have these at my local Walmart at the time, but that's only because I've actually bought out all the local copies of retro pack that I can find because we have a series called Retro Rivals where we actually use them. But yeah, you get four, same price. This one's a little bit more serviceable. So it's retro classic cards, which like the Light of Destruction thing means that you probably aren't gonna be actually using any of these cards in a duel today, like in modern advanced format Yu-Gi-Oh! But I do think that it gets nostalgia points because like the card pool in Retro Pack is really cool. You got Red Eyes, Blue Eyes, Dark Magician. It's better, in my opinion, than opening packs of 
Legend of Blue Eyes and Spell Ruler and Metal Raiders because those have so many totally useless vanilla cards, weird equip spells and stuff that just isn't really very fun to pull. Whereas this like gives you the hits, like in addition to the kind of trio of monsters, you get stuff like Relinquished and Gate Guardian and even Graceful Charity and stuff that's in here too. So like that's pretty cool. I think if I was a Yu-Gi-Oh player who kind of just wants like some old school, just nostalgia kind of dopamine hits, this is a pretty good one. I also find that the rarity like pull rates on this are pretty good. Whenever we do retro rivals, we pretty much always get three foils out of the four packs that you get. All in all, I think this new four pack box model is mixed. If it's a new set, like, and you get the token, it's okay. If it's a random old set like Light of Destruction, eh, definitely avoid it. And if it's retro pack, then it's pretty good for a very specific subset of people. So moving on, the next thing I saw at Walmart were the tins, and it's actually a bit of a mixed bag. So my Walmart had last year's 2023 Dueling Heroes tins, and also this year's new Dueling Mirrors tins. The tins recently have been like a big point of contention because they have been taking out promo cards which really hurts the product. And also they've been making the set sizes larger and larger, which makes it harder and harder to pull the cards that you might need from the tin. One cool thing though, is that all the older tins that I've spotted, they discount them to $15 instead of the new $21.99 price tag. And I think that actually certainly changes the value proposition a little bit. Would I buy last year's tins for 15 bucks myself? Personally, mm, no, not really. It didn't have the most amazing selection of cards. You can pull some pretty neat bestials and like a Castera Fenrir. It was also only like archetypal stuff, so they didn't really have any staples in the tins. That didn't help. They saved those all for rarity collection. However, if a random person was paying 15 bucks for the tin last year, it's serviceable. They could rarity upgrade one of their decks, like maybe Exo Sisters or something. I don't know, it's fine. This year's tins though, at $21.99, I have a lot more complaints about. The 400 card set size is awful. I've spoken at length about this. I think it makes it way too random what you pull. They had done promos where maybe you can get that new art of Raigeki or like Harpy's Feather Duster or something like that, then sure, like it's cool. At least that there's like a guarantee for the casual fan. That feels nice. They also have tokens in the tins, but you can pull them in the space of like a normal card. And I think that's truly just insane. Like the tokens could at least be promo cards. Like they're promos in the four pack boxes, but they're not promos in the tins. So that's really strange. If this year's tins went to 15 bucks, then like, Maybe it's fine, but I still think that Konami basically needs to like rethink how that they're just doing this tin situation. It's just a hard sell, especially now that they're doing these like rarity collections and this new bonanza thing where, you know, you at least get guaranteed mixed rarities of like good staple cards. I just think it's like better value for money. I don't know what they're gonna do about the tins, but I don't like how they're looking right now. Even at 15 bucks, I just, I don't know, I don't like it. Okay, so so far Yu-Gi-Oh has not been scoring great on the Walmart value scale or whatever. This does take a bit of a turn when we get to the structure deck section. Because I actually think that like Yu-Gi-Oh! Structure decks, at least at Walmart, are kind of a good value, low key. The reason why is because Walmart has basically discounted every single Yu-Gi-Oh! Structure to $8. And that's not that bad of a price as it happens. So Structure decks used to cost $10 and a lot of people's heads, they still cost $10, but the MSRP for them now is like 12 bucks. You're gonna be paying like $36 for three of them. But when Walmart has them discounted to eight bucks, you're getting three for $24 and suddenly, even some of the older structure decks, like the Dark World structure deck, or the Trap Trick structure deck, or even the Albaz structure deck, suddenly are not that bad because these are structures where three copies gives you a playable archetype that you can use. Right now, the best thing to buy would probably be the Fire King structure deck. There's a small caveat though. Walmart is still stocking the Saga of Blue Eyes White Dragon structure decks. This is a product from 2013. Over 10 years ago, this old Blue Eyes White Dragon structure deck, it's not good, it's not playable. And I think it's deceptive because a lot of casual players will see Blue Eyes White Dragon and be like, oh, I remember Blue Eyes, and they'll buy it, and then maybe they'll go to the local card shop and try to play it and realize that this deck sucks ass. Now, they're gonna be releasing a new Blue Eyes White Dragon structure deck next year, and I hope that when they do, they can phase out all the copies of this old one. They also recently reprinted the Realm of Light structure deck, which this is like Light of Destruction. It just confuses me. I think, again, it was all about reprinting Light Sworns or making them accessible again. It's a little weird to me though because all the relevant Light Sworn cards, for the most part, got reprinted pretty recently in Battles of Legend Armageddon. 
So I'm not really sure what that's about. I mean, like, because this is a structure deck from 2014, which means like the power level and just kind of card recency is shot. Like you, you're not gonna really get anything great out of it. I mean, maybe there's like this perfect world where somebody could buy the light torn structures and the blue eye structures because they're kind of from the same time period and then duel their friends and like that could be the plan but and the only other thing i saw at my walmart besides that was just mystery packs and like mystery cubes which are awful and terrible and you should never buy them but we do buy them and do series on them where we duel with them so if you want to watch those you can kind of get some entertainment out of our suffering but like please do not buy that stuff at all and that was pretty much my walmart Yu-Gi-Oh excursion so to wrap it up is it worth it for the average person to go out to their local Walmart and buy Yu-Gi-Oh packs or cards or whatever today? The answer is, uh, mostly no. The only thing I think that's actually worth buying for the average person at Walmart now are the $8 structure decks. And specifically, the Fire King, Crimson King, Dark World, Trap Tricks, Albaz, those structure decks, totally good. Light Sworn and Blue Eye structure decks, definitely not. The tins. Uh, they've just gotten weaker and weaker each year. I mean, I think if you really know what you're looking for out of a tin and you see it for 15 bucks, then like maybe it's all right, but I don't really like it. We already talked about the four pack things. They're a bit of a mix. I think you can buy them if you like retro pack or maybe if a new set just came out, it's like a serviceable purchase. I think if they should lower the price them a little bit and it would be perfect. Okay, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think. Is it like worth it to buy Yu-Gi-Oh cards at like your regular department store? What does your department store sell in particular? And like, does it have some sort of a discount? All right, that's it. Subscribe. Bye.